let us begin. So I am going to be stacking and processing my moon images I just took. It's like 99% full moon, so it's not like a full full. Last yesterday was supposed to be the full full moon, so I missed it by a day because there was clouds. Oh well. Uh, where do I begin? Right. So <clears throat> I have just dragged them in here off my camera. I have a lot of images in here. I think I grabbed a total of probably around 800 individual frames of the moon. Some of them I have to delete at the end of our list here, but these are all in RAW. Those were my settings. Uh, 11, or F11, uh, 1 320th of a second at ISO 400. That's I've tried adjusting and playing with each one, and I, I think that is the best clarity I can get out of it um, with a single image. <clears throat> so, yeah, it gets a little brighter, because for some reason when you're looking at RAWs, it just it does that in my crap. So, i got to get to the bottom here, because there's a few pictures I can't use, so I have to delete them. <clears throat> and let this fucking do its thing here and get there and then I took about 50 dark frames as well uh, dark frames will do something remove noise I guess at least I hope they do I don't know for sure so these are the ones at the end here so that was this different setting F11 oh, fuck was it at F11 in the front yeah, it was. Okay, we were always at F11. So that should be the last one I took at those settings. Then I tried changing shit. So we'll delete these frames, because we're not using those. And then a few of these dark frames were fucked up. In fact, I fucked up all the dark frames because I put them at F13. Oh well. Oh, I see what happened. The first few were trying to autofocus. That's right. Okay, so I got 753 frames of the moon that I will stack into one single image and make it look beautiful. So all the programs I use are free. You find them on the internet. The first one I'm going to be using is called PIP. <coughs> Funny name, PIP. PIP is the program that will it converts the images to a different format so I can stack them and I guess it does some quality stuff as well I don't really know uh, we're gonna add our images we're gonna go to tonight's which is that this and we gotta select pretty much all except our dark frames first just like that. Open. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Alright, and because I'm doing the full image of the moon instead of a single image of the moon, we're going to click on full disk. Or instead of like zoomed in to something, um, full disk. Next, we're going to add some dark files because we happen to grab those. And I'm assuming it will put them all together and do whatever it needs to do with them to help clean the image up from noise or whatnot. Emil dark frame, save master dark file. Okay. Uh, pixel. <gasps> yeah, we could play with that. All right. So that's done. <clears throat> Next, input options. I do not change anything here. All right? Nope, I don't change anything here. Go to processing options. This right here, monochrome conversion, we're going to uh, turn that off because we want a color image. Well, I want a color image. <clears throat> you do whatever the hell you want. Mon turning it to monochrome will basically be black and white. I don't want a black and white image because I like adding the color. 
Now, cropping here, what this is going to do is basically make the frame smaller, bring the image closer. I do 1600 by 1600 based on my camera's ability to whatever. It'll it'll bring it like right in the center of the image, and it'll I'll crop it again later when I'm going to do my next part. Quality options, I do not change anything in here. Um, nothing there. Output, I uh, want to save it as a TIFF. And it'll, you can choose a directory, but it's going to just put it in the folder that I started. So, <clears throat> this is going to take forever. So, bear with me. The live stream, just come back in a minute, a couple minutes. So, start processing and this will take that's probably gonna take like 10 minutes to be honest <clears throat> so just first gotta do the dark frames then gotta do each individual frame oh cancel hold on I forgot to do something that's that's my bad um, processing options no quality options no where the hell is it Um, where the hell are you? It should be in quality. Oh, right here. Quality limiting. Um, only keep the best frames. We're doing a percentage. So basically, what this will do is, um, instead of you having to go through each image, in case like a cloud comes through or you move the camera and it's a little off, this will <coughs> basically make the best percentage. We're going to say out of our 750 frames, we'll just do 95%. So it'll keep 95% of those frames. The rest will get thrown out um, if, based on the quality of them. That's what I forgot to do. <clears throat> so now, try that again. Let that do that. I'm going to eat this hot dog. When I took all these images, I took them on my tracker. I used a Nikon D3400. I ended up, you saw the settings I used, and I just hit a button. The little clicker I have, basically, over and over again. And like I said, this part's going to take a bit, probably like 10 minutes. I should have done this beforehand, but I want to show you how it does what it needs to do. <clears throat> and then we'll go into the actual stacking part after, which goes really quick, actually, compared to this. Okay, that took quite some time. Does it tell me how much time? Not that much time. Whatever that is. Probably, like, fucking 30 minutes. Um, so, all this has been done whatever it needed to do we've got 715 frames that it kept 38 frames were thrown out because of poor quality so we're done with pip we don't need pip anymore the next program i use is auto stacker which you can use registax instead but i don't really know anything about registax yet i just started playing around with it so i'll use auto stacker for my moon stacking here so, this is what Auto Stacker looks like. Uh, we're going to go open because we're bringing our new frames in. And we're going to go to tonight's moon. Now, go in that folder and Pip will automatically make a new folder or wherever you put it. Mine, I just left to make it go wherever it goes. It'll look like this, nothing in there, you just gotta change your format to image files. It shows all your TIFF. So this is all our all our pictures. So we're gonna do oops. Click on one, control A for all, open. Here is 
a quick representation of what our image looks like before stacked. Yes, this is not stacked yet, so we're going to do so. Um, for auto stacker, <clears throat> I don't know what everything really does, but things that I like to do is go to advance and brute force alignment. It says slow, it doesn't actually go slow. Um, I just like turning it on because I feel like uh, that helps, maybe? I don't know. Um, it did have a master dark file that it put in, I thought. It shouldn't matter because I already took them out with uh, pip. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, <clears throat> you have to go to this side here and you have to draw place AP grid. I don't really know how many you're supposed to do, but I know what I do. And I just do that. I usually just leave it on 24 because if you go bigger, well, I guess you could do that. It's the whole image. Set the size of line. I don't really know what to do, except align, help align image. So the more you have, I would assume the more detail you'd have. And who knows? I usually do 24, so I guess I'll just keep it on 24. Yeah. So, there's that. <laughs> and basically, we've already just go. Um, here, you can change again, once again, uh, the percentage of frames used. So you can make it drop more if you really wanted to. But seeing we already did it in... What's it called? We can just leave it like that, or usually do 100% if you already dropped all your frames, but just in case there's some more that need to be dropped, I'll leave it at 95. Um, we're not going to use that. That just makes like a second sharp image that is just pointless. So I'll click stack and let it go to work. And this is much faster than the other process of converting all those damn files. All right, I don't know what the quality graph means, but that's there. But our image is stacked. We can close out of auto stack or yeah, auto stacker completely. We're done with this. Thanks. All right. So how I process my images is I use Photoshop. Registax, I guess, is really good for processing moons or planets, but I do not know how to use it to its full potential or really any potential of it. So. I'm going to stick with what I know. I'm going to use Photoshop. And when I use Photoshop for at least the moon, I don't really do anything other than go into the uh, lens camera raw part of it. So let's open our image here. <clears throat> and it should be sitting right in here, right there. So we got that. This is our image that we're going to process. Now, like I said, I don't do anything in here other than go right to camera raw filter. So I do all my moon pictures because that's all I really know how to do them. Uh, there's obviously easier ways, but or better ways, but this is the way I do it. So, really, it's playing with the sliders here until I find something I like and I usually start with that go with try not to go too crazy with these I hate there we go uh, go into the sharpening tab and crank that fucker up because I can see it just clears up obviously if you zoom in because it's then my camera is only a 24 megapixel you're not going to get quality doing that but you get enough to see some of the uh, features there because the, usually when I crop my images it looks like that so if I had a camera with much more focal length or 
just a higher megapixel count. I could probably get a lot of detail on it, but I do not. So let's play with these sliders a little bit and see if we can get some color to pop and a little bit of the other stuff. And really, this is, at this point, it's to your liking. How do you like your image? Do you like it vibrant? Uh, all that stuff, it's all based on how you like it. <clears throat> oh, I see you. A little OCD. Next, we're going to go in here with the curve just ever so slightly so I like to make things pop a little bit like those light areas you fucker it's always that mouse there you go um, 10 should be fine Don't want to go too crazy. Now, up here, you see there's like a little green tint. You want to play with that. You slide these saturation bars down. There's no green on the moon, so you're not going to really have a problem doing that. So I just bring that down. But there is like an ironish color on the moon, so I like to bring the yellows in a little. And the oranges in a little. Not too much, just enough to bring color to the moon. And that's basically it. I mean, noise reduction's off. Don't want to turn that up because all that's going to do is blur out the moon. Um, yeah. That's all I pretty much do. That's, that's my moon processing. It's super easy, super quick. Um, whoop, open auto stacker real quick with this image and like I said I don't really know anything about it but there's stuff you can do so I will okay look at that sudden change and just for the hell of it I like to do a little bit of a widescreen sort of crop on this come on even up even up Gotta make it perfect. And then crop that. Just how I like it. Alright, save as. I'm gonna save it as a I'm gonna save a TIFF and then I'm gonna save um a JPEG. Save as JPEG Moon. Perfect. And that's it. Nice and processed moon. Now, like I said, 